Hello and welcome to another edition of the Horn of Africa TV. I'm Elias Amare, and with me is, as always, my good friend, Professor Mohammed Hassan. Welcome to the show, Professor Mohammed. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Elias, uh, for inviting me again. Uh, I hope we will have a nice discussion. That's my hope so too. Uh, this is uh, the third uh, part of our continuing discussion on Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa, and beyond. As you know, today is uh, September 11. It is the uh, Ethiopian uh, New Year in the Ethiopian calendar. So we wish all our Ethiopian viewers a very happy New Year and a prosperous year with peace and stability to your country. Uh, I'm sure you will join me in this uh, New Year uh, wish, Professor Mohammed. Indeed, yes. I wish all Ethiopians a prosperous and healthy New Year. Very well. Uh, let us proceed then to the focus of our discussion today. In the first part, we'll be discussing uh, the election in the regional administration or regional state or Kilil as it's called in Amharic of uh, Tigray, the northernmost province. Uh, it had held an uh, election and uh, this was uh, called uh, unconstitutional and uh, illegal, null and void by the federal parliament, the upper uh, house of the fe federal parliament. Uh, but nonetheless, the region of Tigray went ahead and uh, did the election uh, last Wednesday, two days ago that is. How do you view this? What was the, the controversy about the, the, the sort of uh, tension there uh, between conducting the election and not conducting the election? And how did it go overall? It's a very good question. Uh, in order to understand uh, this acrobat of the TPLF, one has to go very deep for the last 27 years, how TPLF and it is gang ruled that country. It is, uh, 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 and then after it was removed from the power, the last two years, what was the strategy of the TPLF? Uh, election is part of the the greater strategy of TPLF of uh, destabilization and weakening the central government in Ethiopia now. Uh, it is not because it is the wish of the people of Tigray and that the people of Tigray will decide the right of their own self-determination and it is a process of democratization. This is a process of uh, uh, legitimizing a gang which have exploited, killed, waged a war uh, uh, within Ethiopia and it is also within the region. And now it's coming with a new dress to represent themselves. They are democrat and they are legitimizing through election the right of the people of Tigray. This minority regime, when it took over power, uh, it didn't uh, 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 wait itself in that being from a minority of Ethiopian population and understanding that could have given them to build a new Ethiopia on the new basis and a, be a democrat might have succeeded to create a new nation in that country. But they opted for complete control of the power because of the military capacity they had at that moment, they instituted a sort of discriminatory system whereby they can sit on the top by divide and rule. And this have lasted for the last 27 years. Finally, the Ethiopian people got fed up and there was a popular uprise. It was a spontaneous popular uprise, particularly in the Oromo region, Finally, also it went to the Amhara region and it overthrew it. Of course, in 27 years, the agony of Ethiopian people, the jailing, the killing, and the massacres and the genocide they have committed in the Somali region, and also in Gambella, the taking of the, the, the land, the land grab which they have taken in Gambella and, and other parts of Ethiopia, 
the marginalization of the Oromo peasant, which have been chased away from their land. People estimate about 3 million Oromo peasants around that the Sababa. They were given a peanut and they were thrown out into the street and most of them perished with hunger. And they wanted even... These to are uh, uh, peasants around the, the capital, Addis Ababa? Indeed, these peasants. It is three types of land grabbing happened there. One is that it is with the idea is that to enlarge Addis Ababa with 100 kilometer radius with the support of the University of Lyon Department of Architects, they have designed for them in order to expand at the suburb 100 kilometers. At the same time, also, they link the Oromo region from the east and the west and weaken it and gradually even dominate completely the Oromo region. And by doing that, they wanted also to dominate the whole Ethiopia in the region. They were advised that the, uh, one has to understand here, the TPLF doesn't also represent the people of Tigray. The TPLF is an agent for external forces, which they were very happy to find as such agent, a minority, incident on itself, but dependent with external support and external uh, uh, oxygen. So what happened is that it is, the first is to grab the land of the Oromos around the capital and gradually expand it. The second is that it is uh, the land grab which they have alluded, allocated to uh, uh, so-called investors. In fact, I don't call them investors. These are another gangs in alliance with TPLF taking the land of the Oromos around the Zouai and other parts and also some of the land of the Amharas allocated to these flower uh, producing uh, uh, companies which in fact they don't bring anything to the country except misery. And Ethiopia became the second biggest flower producing country in, in the world. $550 million they were earning from that. Of course, the consequence of the flower business, it is, we have spoken last time, uh, 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 as far as uh, using an extreme uh, uh, and huge chemical, which unknown chemical, penetrating the drinking water, and then it was killing most of the peasantry who are living around with liver cancers. Uh, mm -hmm. There is no protection also for the population. So to come to the main point, why they are organizing now the election? First of all, they have three points they wanted to show to uh, uh, the international community and the Ethiopian people. One to say is that it is the prime minister and his government is illegitimate and it is ended with its legitimacy today, which is uh, 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 September 1, according to the Ethiopian calendar. Second, to immigrate themselves as they are legitimate, they have been elected democratically, and they will establish their parliament and the government. And from there also, the third point is that they are federalist movement. They are never been federalist to the TPLF. The TPLF use the federalism as a means of domination, as a means of marginalizing the bigger population in the country, and, and using this modern system, and turning it upside down to show to the international community they are legitimate. As far as I am concerned, these guns are supposed to be brought to court. It is not a political party, TPLF, anymore. It is a bandit who is organized to, in service of external forces and themselves. Therefore, for me, it is not legitimate, and it cannot be legitimate. And uh, uh, the government in Addis Ababa, they should not take action taken there against them. Leave them alone there and face the reality and encourage the democratic forces in Tigray. At the same time, put them in quarantine. And see, I don't think they can survive for a very long time if the government in Addis Ababa developed a strategy and gradually squeezing their oxygen and uh, put them down and encourage the people of Tigray. The second mm -hmm. important point is that the people of Tigray must the crime very clearly. The media in Ethiopia and the official media, they should bring all the crimes committed 
by the TPLF gangs. For example, the crimes and the genocide they have committed in the Somali region, the same in Oromia, the same in Gambela, also in Amhara region and so on. This has to be brought in a state of political appeasement the Prime Minister had followed the last two years. It had ended now. The confrontation is there, and the population has to be educated, and it has to be shown to them. Particularly, the people of Tigray have no knowledge. They had been isolated for the last 27 years. These gangs, they have committed a huge crime and looted the resources of the nation. At the same time, waged war against their neighbors. What they did, the war in the name, with the pretext of border war, they tried to invade Eritrea and to overthrow the government in Eritrea. They didn't succeed because their understanding is simple. When we analyze why they waged the war against Eritrea, three elements come. This minority is frightened and cannot control the whole Ethiopia in the way they wanted it. Therefore, they have to create and scapegoat, and that is always is Eritrea in that country, and use this pretext and mobilize the human resources and the resources of Ethiopia. At the same time, the elements who are supporting them from the back, that they have to wage war against Eritrea. The strategy was simple. They thought that they can walk easily and overthrow the government of Eritrea and replace it with a puppet regime. By doing that, they can also have the harbor Assad in their hand, and they will frighten the whole region that it is defeating Shabia with well-organized uh, 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 movement and the government of Eritrea. This will give us a very big prestige, and the whole region will kneel down for us, and we will imperialist forces who are behind us and who have supported us, they will shower us with Madai and money, and we will rule that region and that area for a very long time. It was a fantasy, a fantasy created uh, not based on reality, without, uh, uh, if you, they read a little bit the history of Eritrean people's struggle, they could have understood. But they went to this war and they entered in Gagmir. Finally, they have to accept the border uh, issue to go to the International Arbitration Court. In all the court's decision, they were totally defeated and virtual demarcation was put in by the UN, the cartographic department, and it have distributed for both governments the uh, uh, virtual demarcation. The late prime minister of Ethiopia, of the leader of TPLF, have reversed it. Reverse it because it is defeated legally. It has no other excuse. It has to use another tactics, which is a very poor tactic, saying that we have to discuss there is a problem. There must be an, 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 an open discussion between us and Eritrea. And uh, sending a lot of delegation and complaining to guests who are coming, we can implement the border issue provided that Eritrea starts a relationship with us. We have to build a diplomatic relationship with Eritrea. We have to be in the speaking term. Then we can go, the five points what they have put in, we can go to the border issue. This is a tactic to delay the demarcation. Mm. But a endless, uh, endless dialogue, uh, as you said, uh, to, to delay the acceptance of the court ruling, the Hague court ruling, which awarded Badime the casus belli to Eritrea. Indeed, whatever delay and tactic they make, this is uh, uh, once they have uh, agreed and signed the Algiers Agreement, the three famous documents. One is that it is, both of them, they have to go to the court and the decision of court is binding and it is have to be accepted. They have signed that, and the decision of the court was very clear. Secondly, the uh, claiming commission. Of course, the third commission should be made by African Union, but the African Union, because of its weakness, uh, didn't do that because of the pressure also at that moment of their masters from the back are pushing not to happen, even though they themselves are the guarantor of this agreement. But finally, the TPLF, TPLF can only survive as a as, as, as a virus, uh, only by support getting from outside. 
Now it has been chased away from it is uh, thrown and, and hiding in Tigray and hiding behind the people of Tigray, starting a new theater saying that it is we are legitimate, we have organized an election and try even to people uh, to bring uh, people, charlatans who have the paid by them and to say that we are more legitimate than Addis Ababa. I really asked the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Dr. Abiy Ahmed Ali, that to think very good. There are a lot of options the Prime Minister of Ethiopia can use uh, and should not go in dialogue and discussion with these bandits, that it is what they did in Ethiopia and the crime they committed in Ethiopia now have to be brought up openly to the Ethiopian people, one by one, and he had to institute also a new commission to bring all this crime to the Ethiopian people and to the international community. And we, uh, Ethiopians in diaspora, we will support and we will mobilize our progressive lawyers and others, in this case also to other courts, whether it is national or international courts, to show these criminals uh, 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 worse than all other cr criminals in the African continent to be brought to court, whether inside the country or outside the country. The Prime Minister should concentrate on that and uh, she should not think that it is this is the voice of the people of Tigray. The people of Tigray, they never had voice for the last 27 years and now it is repeated the same. Okay, uh, just to clarify to our viewers who may not be familiar with uh, the election uh, process that was scheduled to happen in Ethiopia, uh, these were national elections that take place every five years according to the constitution, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this would be regional elections at the provincial or Kili level, uh, also, at the same time, uh, elections to the, the the national parliament of Ethiopia. Uh, they were originally scheduled to be held in August, uh, last month, that is. Huh? But due to the uh, ex uh, extraordinary COVID pandemic situation, the National Election Board said it is impossible to hold elections at this time. It has to be delayed, postponed, and, uh, and therefore there was uh, some, uh, some debate and discussion uh, as to constitutionality of it. Uh, it finally went to the, the Federation, the House of Federation, that is the upper uh, house of parliament, and the and experts as well, uh, they decided that it would be uh, le legitimate to to postpone the national e elections under these extraordinary circumstances of the COVID pandemic. Correct? Indeed, yes. Uh, uh, of course, this uh, COVID pandemic it is a war. A war which we don't know uh, uh, it is headquartered. It is a war against all humanity in the world. It's not specific also to Ethiopia. It, for any uh, rational and, 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 and uh, 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 logical government or any rational individual man and woman, in a such a situation to organize a national election will be very, very difficult because it is you have in one side, you have, you have to combat the uh, COVID, which is uh, uh, very dangerous and uh, probably will uh, bring a lot of disaster for a lot of countries. And mm -hmm. the basis of that, that uh, they have postponed uh, uh, the election, I think, uh, for less than one year. But the TPLF, yeah. the TPLF rejected that. The TPLF mm -hmm. rejected not because it is interested on, on combating COVID or, or and so on, but it is part of it is a, a strategy of chaos. The TPLF, mm -hmm. they were moved from power and they ran away to their cages in Makale. They had tried a lot of strategies to weaken the change in Ethiopia. One, by inciting inter-ethnic uh, conflict, trying to buy uh, people from 
the different ethnic groups and so and so on and incite them to 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 come into contradiction with with, with uh, uh, the central government and incite and conflict and the more it is the conflict increases in that country they wanted to tell to the international community you see once we were thrown out from the from the uh, the seat of power this primitive uh, people they will kill each other so we were right that uh, we could u- have used uh, 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 military power to squash these movements because the country is not ready for uh, transition of democracy but these looters they are the one have used all elections uh, killing political group arresting their oppositions and so and so on and filling whatever election they organized we have seen it in 2005 what happened once they lost the election in the big cities what they did on the political parties and the militants who are supporting those political parties were brought in into a concentration camp tplf was never <coughs> in election they are interested in two major issues one by hook or crook to rule that country and second to be in service of external forces that is the job description of tpla therefore one now they try to paint the center as if they are democrat that is really a mockery of justice and should not be accepted by any ethiopian people this doesn't mean that ethiopians can have a problem and a contradiction with the prime minister but i consider that contradiction is not a primary contradiction for the moment it is a secondary contradiction the main contradiction in that country is between all ethiopian people including the, the tigrayan people against tpla that should be very clear and should be demarcated demarcated clearly and explained to the people of ethiopia the, here is that is the political role of political parties and including the government of Dr. Abi, they have to play their own role and to explain. It's not only as a political group, but they have to explain what happened the last 27 years, the looting, the killing, the marginalization, the displacement of the Ethiopian people, and so on and so on. And all these uh, uh, assistance and debts, uh, uh, loans, they got from the uh, so-called international community was looted by very few individuals. Who are now stationed in two hotels in Makale, and this one now they wanted to use election. It is like a mafia reorganizing itself in election, and it is. I don't think it is uh, a mafia can organize an election. Uh, if if it was like that, Marlon Brando could have organized an election in America and won the presidency. So TPLF is not different from a mafia group who have no any interest. They have killed millions of people. They have uh, 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 destroyed the life of millions of Ethiopian, Ethiopian families. We should not forget that. So from mm-hmm. that perspective, I say again, we have to create a united front against the TPL. The second important point of this election is as follows. The election have, uh, the first is legitimizing the bandits. It's not an, uh, an, a political organization, it's a banditry. The second is to weaken the center so that we are legitimate and we are, we are endorsed by the majority of Tigrayan people, which is not true. It was totally false and it is organized by themselves and it is the Tigrayan people that didn't have the democratic right to choose whom they want and they were in fact in a concentration camp like the Nazis organizing in the concentration camp and election. The second point is that for them is the another very important is to break or to block the peace process between Ethiopia and Eritrea, which is uh, 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 two years now, the peace process is continuing as uh, the, the two uh, countries have signed the peace. It has created an atmosphere of peace in the whole region. The third is that it is the tripartite agreement would have been signed in Asmara between the three states, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Somalia. There are also forces who doesn't like this peace process because for the last 80 years, these forces, particularly Europeans, at one time also Americans, but not today, 
that they do want the people of the Horn of Africa to have peace and to work uh, uh, together and build the region. This rich region inhabited by poor people, they should not get peace. Those elements in alliance with CPLF, they were very depressed and their agent was thrown out from the, from the throne and they make a lot of propaganda uh, and, and I'm sure they will write reports saying that this is a legitimate election and Tigra is democratic more than Addis Ababa. This is a mm -hmm. joke. This is a joke on the Ethiopian face. We will not accept it. Yes, in this uh, <clears throat> election, as you said, uh, there are also uh, some analysts who believe that the ultimate objective of the TPLF is to, to set uh, a prelude or a, 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 to prepare the ground for secession. Uh, as you know, in the Ethiopian constitution that they themselves uh, drafted and uh, uh, put in place, in 1994, I suppose, or 95, uh, there is that uh, controversial article called Article 39, which allows for cessation. Uh, were they perhaps, uh, or are, are they, uh, do you think that the, the TPLF uh, is also working to make the ground conducive towards cessation? Because uh, in the past uh, months before the election, uh, they have been drumming up uh, war, the beating the war drums in Tigray, uh, scaring the people through intense propaganda that uh, uh, the Tigray people are now in circle, that war is coming, that uh, Shabia, meaning Eritrea, is going to invade us, that the Amhara are also going to invade from the other direction and so on and so forth. This kind of war mongering has been going on in that uh, uh, regional state in Tigray for quite some time. And parallel with this, they, all, they have also been uh, training militias, uh, uh, arming the, the youth of Tigray, conscripting uh, probably upwards of uh, 200,000 Militia, some estimate, in preparation for, for uh, an upcoming war. So, uh, taking all these into consideration, is this perhaps a prelude uh, to secede and, uh, uh, as you said, hoping that there will be also chaos in the rest of Ethiopia, then uh, that will set the ground for. Uh, uh, an independent state of Tigray, as as they have always dreamed since 1976, is that uh, uh, a realistic scenario, or what do you think of, uh, of this scenario? It's a, a very good question. Uh, since the last two years, there are several scenar scenarios have been brought up concerning Ethiopia. Uh, one of the major scenarios which were brought up uh, by elements, so-called experts and think tanks, particularly in Europe, uh, uh, and those elements who consider themselves or they baptize themselves as specialists of the Horn of Africa in Ethiopia, that they brought and recycled and baptized uh, the Yugoslav scenario. But the situation in Ethiopia is not Yugoslavia. That is totally fake. On the contrary, they wanted to frighten us and they wanted to put sand in our eyes. Yugoslavia situation and Yugoslavia was destroyed by German imperialism. It's not even mm -hmm. American imperialism. First of all, once BDR, the former uh, socialist country of uh, East Germany, was collapsed, that the army and all the equipment of that uh, 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 government is fall in the hand of the Federal Republic of Germany in the name of unity, coal and Genscher. You have collected all that weapon and they gave it to Tujman of Croatia. Because Germany had always an ambition to have a new colony states in the Balkan. And of course, mm -hmm. Serbia 
it had always been twice in the First World War and Second World War, had fought against the German imperialism in the First World War, and secondly also against the German Nazis. So the Serbia paid a very heavy price. I'm not saying there is no nationalist sentiment, but that it is in 1940s when the Nazis installed two forces, German imperialism on one side and the Vatican, which considers Croatia is in fact the borderline between Orthodox world and Catholic world. So the mm -hmm. How about Slovenia? Uh, uh, Slovenia didn't participate on that, even though they are Slavic people. So what happened is the Ustasha, the fascist movement of Croatia, which is supported by the Vatican and the Germans, have killed a lot of Serbs. There was no even relationship, there was no even colonial relation between the Serbs and, 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 and the Croats. Both of them are, uh, 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 they speak the same language, Serbo-Croat, but the Croats are Catholic and the Serbs are are, 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 are orthodox. And the Ustasha committed a lot of crime. And what This you're talking about during the Second World War, during, right? During the Second World War. Okay. Once with, with the resistance forces led by General Field Marshal Tito, which he himself is a Croat, and an, mm -hmm. a lot of patriotic Croats, Slovenians, and so on, so on, united against German Nazism. The word Yugoslavia by itself has to be explained to the Ethiopian people. Yugoslavia means the southern Slavic people who had been under uh, the Habsburg Empire for a very long time and dominated, and partly also who had been under the Ottoman Empire. The word Yugoslavia was created by Slovenians, which is mm -hmm. the southern Yugoslavia. Uh, southern Slavs. Slav, Slavic people. Uh, the, the Slavic people, of course, are all over Europe. Russians are Slavs, Polish, Ukrainians. Uh, uh, Czechos, Czechs, uh, Slovaks. The dominant, yeah. dominant uh, in the Habsburg Empire, they were the Germans, and their partners were the major, the, uh, the Hungarian. To come to our point, to uh, uh, bring the idea uh, in Ethiopia, there is a Yugoslavia scenario, after all, academically, historically, and psychologically, is wrong. That condition doesn't exist in Ethiopia but it is used as a means of propaganda to prepare the population for ethnic genocide and war among themselves. And this is the strategy of element of European Eurocentric imperialist forces who wanted to stop by this, to inculcate this idea and break the peace process in the Horn of Africa. For them, the peace process in the Horn of Africa and the unity of, of the people of the Horn of Africa and working together is very dangerous because they have applied that since eight years that it is divide and rule uh, of these people and bring them to misery and loot their resources and use their area as a strategy of a stepping stone to intervene in the Middle East and in, even uh, in the Far East. So the Yugoslavia scenario is for, uh, it is not correct, it is not scientific, it, uh, it doesn't hold water. That is. One of the, the analogy of Yugoslavia and Ethiopia is uh, absolutely unscientific and it has no relationship. Yeah. But the purpose is to create that sentiment, to create yeah. that sentiment. So when the, once you repeat this analogy, which is means that, yes, Tigray will, will be the first Croatia to succeed because huh, the TPLF, after it was chased away from its power, this criminal gang, what they did is that I call it a long march in reverse. They ran away to Tigray. And of course, mm -hmm. the center was not strong enough. And, 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 and I have a critic on that. They could have brought all the crimes and make a propaganda and teach the Tigrayan people what kind of people they are, huh? and so and so on. They didn't do that, and they benefited from that. After all, the people of Tigray, they will be responsible for their own destiny. And I don't think the people of Tigray, they are crazy enough to decide uh, and to live under the domination of these looters, which will not, and these criminals, will not bring, bring peace among the people in Ethiopia and also in the region. I'm sure a lot of Tigrayans, they are thinking the way I'm thinking. 
So TPLF went back to Tigray to start mobilizing militia. It is organized. It is birthday of the 45th birthday. It's inculcating. And, and of course, a lot of young people have no knowledge of the past and so on. They might get confused and so on, and there is no a counter propaganda which gives them the correct historical vision for themselves. It is our responsibility. Our brothers and sisters in Tigray, they are our brothers and we will live with them and to bring for them the, the reality what happened under the TPLF, it is our responsibility. We didn't do also that because the center, it didn't organize a serious educational propaganda, not propaganda in a sense that it is to attack the people of Tigray, but the people of Tigray, after all, they are the first victim of these guns who run away and hiding behind them. So it is the task of the center should have mobilized. The media in Ethiopia, it's until now, it is very primitive. It incites one group against another group, instead of creating a unity and starting to build a new relationship, a new basis, and identify the main enemy, they are also just repeating the war monger and one attacking the others and so, and so and so on, weakening the body of the Ethiopian body and even the use not to think properly and so on and creating a chaotic situation. Who will benefit from that? The two, the two groups will benefit from that. One is a group which is looted and overthrown and run away in Tigray. Another, another one which wants the situation to continue like this is the European and, 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 and imperialist and their, and their agent, their agent in the name of journalists, in the name of experts about Ethiopia and the Horn of Africa, and so on, by giving a very dark perspective about the Horn of Africa, and so on and so on. Because they didn't like and they didn't want that peace will prevail in the Horn of Africa, and this peace will be peace of all the peoples of Horn of Africa. They can cooperate together and so on and so on. So they wanted to continue the old divide and rule policy and they got frustrated and they are inciting this. So as far as Yugoslavia concerned, it's totally different from Ethiopia. We are not in a situation that, that our contradiction has reached to a level that we cannot live together. A divorce can only happen when the two partners, they don't want to live together mm -hmm. and they consider their contradiction. So, uh, briefly speaking, uh, would you agree that, uh, first of all, there is no sentiment within the larger body politic of Ethiopia, the Ethiopian people, to wish Tigray to secede away? And on the other hand, there is no sentiment within the Tigray people wanting to secede from Ethiopia. Would that be a correct assessment? Indeed. Uh, first of all, uh, let us start with this example. Uh, the example of myself. I am a Somali. I came from one of the most marginalized, dominated, and later on by TPLF, uh, uh, a lot of uh, genocide and killing. More than a million people have been uh, chased away from their area and so on. But a region, uh, the Somali region, that has Somali. the most grievances uh, Indeed. Against, against the center. Yes. Since two years when the, the President Mustafa Umar came, we and all the young people, those who are the young educated people, we never had a grievances against the people of Tigray. We then never consider that the Tigray people have invaded us and killed us. It is a class which is uses the name of Tigray. There is no difference between the people and, and, and their agent, Abdi Ili. Uh, if Abdi Ili have ruled Ethiopia, he will do the same thing because he's an agent of external force. He is not organically connected to the Somali people. He is, he is just a, a, a vigilante fascist as any people a fascist uh, organization. So we, the Somalis in Ethiopia, we see that, after all, we want to have a good relationship on new basis with all Ethiopian people. We have no complex. We, the Somali people, we speak Somali language. We live in a very big territory of the Horn of Africa. It is in our advantage, even if see from economic and political sense, that the Horn of Africa to be stable, and once it is stable, 
that the people and Ethiopia to be stable with a new relationship, that it is our economy and the economy of the region will grow. It is our interest. We have seen that it is the last 80 years and 70 years, the contradiction one time between Ethiopia and Somalia and so on. We have seen the result of it. We have an experience that it is Somalia is half of the half of the geography of Ethiopia. I mean, if Somalia, and then when TPLF came to power while Somalia is in the Balkanization situation, TPLF continued with the program, not because it's designed by it, it's a minority sitting there and it is it is frightened the minority. And the external forces use this frightened minority, destabilization of Somalia for all this time. And even mm-hmm. invaded Somalia and so on when this peace is coming. So we, the Somali people, we have no contradiction with Oromo brothers, with Southern brothers, with Amhara people, with the people of Tigray and so and so on. We want a new Ethiopia, a new business, a new Horn of Africa, which all of us, we can work together, we can use our resources and so and so on, and create even a bigger market. No problem. The European Union have been unified. They have created their own. Why they refuse us that we cannot create? We are also human beings like them. We are not asking or, or wanted to lose their resources. We want to use our resources for ourselves and for our children, for our elderly and so on, to open the borders and so on, to make uh, business people can move very easily, young people to know each other and so on. But this is not inter- it's not the interest of the European, particularly after Trump coming to power, Trump minimized or almost uh, uh, never intervened in the Horn of Africa, as before as the Democrats. And we had a breezing time, and that breezing time would brought the TPLF to die. They are old masters, they are no more in the power, and they could not give him oxygen as before, and with the pressure of the population, easily collapsed and, smil- and melted like ice cream. So we wish that a new Horn of Africa to develop. Therefore, I think that it is, my advice will be to Dr. Abi, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, he should not get worried about so-called election uh, 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 integral. It is not an election. This is an election in reverse to legitimize gangs. It cannot be accepted. This is, uh, secondly, I think uh, he has to wait and see. And he has to take from the experience of, uh, of uh, the Spanish situation. I mean, there was a nationalist movement who have been elected and they became majority in the parliament and they became the government of uh, 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 Catalonia. And then unilaterally they decided secession. And we know what happened and where they are now. In fact, uh, the chairman uh, the, uh, of uh, Catalonia, he ran away to Belgium. He was here and he was supported by Flemish uh, 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 nationalists. Finally, his own party even chased him away. And not only that, he is no more. He is just a refugee here. I mean, uh, he is no more accepted in Catalonia itself. So I think their fate will be the same if the prime minister do three things simultaneously. One, create a reconciliation and negotiation among the Oromo political forces. This is very fundamental, that it is the Oromo issue is central to Ethiopia and central to the stability of Ethiopia. Second, make a good relationship and reconciliation among the southern people in Walaita and so and so on, and address their questions democratically. Uh, and, 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 And create a united front, the third, against these guns of TPLF and release political prisoners. That will bring the demise of TPLF and it will relieve the people of Tigray and the region. That will be my suggestion. If I will be in his place, I will do that. Very good. Uh, You have uh, alluded to it, uh, that there are forces also, external forces, some camouflaging as political analysts, some as uh, conflict uh, advisors, but more like conflict uh, entrepreneurs or conflict vultures who have been during the past two years instigating uh, these uh, tensions and uh, 
ethnic, uh, between court ethnic conflicts in Ethiopia. Uh, they masquerade as experts uh, from different countries of Europe, uh, very well uh, financed, they seem. Uh, they've been writing numerous articles, uh, analysis papers, uh, flawed analysis, of course, but uh, uh, they have uh, somehow uh, fair uh, circulation in the, in the international the international scene. Some of them are uh, within uh, members of the International Crisis Group. We know the International Crisis Group and what its main focus is. But uh, uh, it seems that when we compile all the uh, articles that they have been writing during the past two years, uh, the majority uh, or the, the, their, their attention or their focus seems to be on trying to legitimize the TPLF, trying to cover up its past scenes and its war crimes and crimes against humanity and uh, make it acceptable and palatable to be uh, a legitimate uh, participant of the Ethiopian political process. And secondly, to, to scuttle, it seems to me, the, the peace process, as you have alluded, that, that of the, the whole region, uh, the peace process between Eritrea, Ethiopia, Somalia, and now it's uh, including Sudan. Sudan is uh, uh, stabilizing slowly. Uh, so uh, I would like to understand, what is the motive? What do you think is the motive? Uh, are there powers behind that want the Horn of Africa in perpetual chaos, uh, in vicious cycles of conflict? And what, is the, the, what would be their interest? Uh, if we can look at, at countries, uh, European countries that uh, traditionally, uh, let's, let's take the French, for example, France as a country. It has its role in Africa has been abysmal, uh, uh, continuing neocolonialism, benefiting from subservient uh, francophony states, extracting resources from them, forcing them to use uh, to deposit their money in French banks to use franc and, and what have you. Uh, so t talk, if you will, at length about. France as a regional power and its role in the Horn of Africa, and then we'll see other, other powers also who may have uh, uh, sinister uh, motives in our region. Excellent question, very good. First of all, let's start with France and France's influence in Europe and her relationship vis-a-vis -vis Africa. France once the European Union was established on the basis of the relationship between Germany and France. That's why, as a compromise, even one of the seats of the European Parliament became in Strasbourg. This is after the Second World War that the United States brokered that in order to bring a sort of, of a unity, European unity, under the American hegemony to bring them a united front against the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe. That have ended in 1990 after the change in Soviet Union and after the change in Eastern Europe. That change brought within Europe a new important hegemonist country called Germany. You know that the euro is, came on the basis of the benchmark. Therefore, if you take 60% of European Union budget is paid by Germany. Germany was the strongest and the motor of the European Union. Yeah, the economic powerhouse of the European, European, powerhouse European Union. Of European Union. And, and Germany also had always, from 1900, had a policy which fund Germanic policy which is called Little Europe, of Middle Europe, that German capitalists have expanded and dominated the former Eastern European countries. Most of German capitalists and German firms are dominant now in Eastern Europe. For France, 
it have a problem now. This alliance between Germany and France, it, it is tilting in favor of Germany. And uh, the France was looking for another alliance. And then one of her, her concept was la Méditerranée. The Mediterranean countries have to be alike. So which is means from Israel, the whole Mediterranean country until Morocco, and uh, above there from Cyprus, Greek, Italy, Malta, all until Portugal, these countries, they have to be under in the name of, uh, of uh, Mediterranean under the hegemony of the French imperialism. And one of the reasons that French imperialism invaded Libya, because Libya rejected. Libya had 1,750 kilometers in the Mediterranean. And the concept of Libya is to say the Mediterranean must be a peaceful sea. We don't want an alliance of one force against another force. Therefore, because of that, French became Sarkozy was in the front line to invade, and we know the story what happened in Libya. The second point. This was in 2011, correct? 11. The second point is that it is French-speaking Africa. That France, her hegemony and and her imperialist or new colonial states from Niger. Until, until Central Africa, down to until uh, 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 Mali and all these French-speaking uh, Cote d'Ivoire and so on. Madagascar. Are, uh... Yes, these are called the French region. And this French region, in economic term, is subsidizing France every year about 400 billion euros. The former president of France, Jacques Girac, he said, the day this subsidy stops coming to France, we are just a simple country. We are not a big power as we, we have put it in my head. We will be a normal country and it will be a very big crisis in France, you see. So French imperialism is guarding its interest, there, not in two eyes, in ten eyes, with all its forces and have intervened now in Mali, in Central Africa, and so on and so on. We have seen it. So French imperialism will never appreciate any kind of peace in the Horn of Africa, and they don't want also that African Horn of African people work together. This will be a very bad example, and it will encourage other Africans, and particularly French-speaking Africans, who are close to each other ethnically and socially and so on, they might imitate the people of Horn of Africa. Therefore, France is the main enemy of the people of Horn of Africa not to have peace. And it had always playing a very tricky stage. And, and now elements who consider themselves and who have adopted us as their own children, they write so-called experts, but in fact connected to intelligence services, they write and incite conflict in the Horn of Africa. That is one of the major interests. And France knows the more Africa gets independent, and start deciding for herself that the French position will be weakened with the European Union, and finally the balance of forces will be will tilt toward Germany. That is why Great Britain have analyzed. Great Britain, after the Second World War, had admitted and had says that we are no more. We are just an ordinary country, and we are no more a big power in the world. And they went to the United States, and they said. Lead us the hand of the, the key of the city to the Americans, and American capital and British capital became integrated. And you could see now Britain had went out from the European Union. Germany and France hoped that to keep Britain in, in the European Union for several reasons. One, because of her military technology and so, and so on and this. But British capitalists and British people voted to opt not to be part of the European Union and they have went out from the European Union, and it had weakened the project of European Union imperialist project to impose their will outside the European territory, particularly Africa and in the Middle East. That is why these people, they see from them. And what they do is that there are small countries like Norway, Denmark, Belgium, the Netherlands, and so on. This are small shop, I call them shop of the bigger imperialist countries, and they use them, they use the elements from the so-called intellectual but mercenary and who are living in, 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 in crisis, 
they use the intellectual and the institution of these countries and, and, and they bring them as if that there is a democracy and they, they to preach about democracy at the same time incite conflict among uh, uh, the African brothers, particularly the people of Horn of Africa, have a lot of historical link before they came and say so. So they use these small countries, the Netherlands, Belgium. The crisis group is uh, main offices in Belgium. The crisis group mm -hmm. have never wrote anything positive on Eritrea. Uh, the crisis group always writes negative and conflict on Somalia. The crisis group never wrote critic when Wayane or TPLF is in power. And now they are writing about TPLF. They are they wanted to go to monitor the election and so and so on. I think uh, Prime Minister Abi should tell them uh, face to face and we have to say a cut a cut and we have to it's a good measure they have taken and step on them when they came at the airport. They think that it is a disco. They just they can pass as they want because they are white, they are Norwegians, they are Belgians, they are this and so on. No, we, we have to say, no, this is our home. You are not invited, you are not just. This is not a disco, this is, is, is another region, and we should kick them. In fact, it is, they should have been arrested uh, 48 hours and little bit to humiliate them and throw them out. These are charlatans who cannot work, normal work, and be a normal worker as a man and a woman, but they want to live as a parasite of intelligent services and so-called NGOs. We know them, and the problem is that we have to raise the consciousness of the young people in Ethiopia, that it is to come to the level to understand, you have to know the world and what is around you before you know yourself. It is very, very important. The mirror is we live in this world which is very cruel and egoistic, and they are not interested on us. They are only interested on us that when we kill each other, to, to paint us as if we are savages and uncivilized people, uh, and so on. So we have to be very careful, and we have to educate our young people. We have to debate. The media people in Ethiopia, they are a bit primitive. Their understanding of the world is very, very primitive. I think their hours stopped in the 14th century, and they cannot think beyond that. We have to create a progressive media in Ethiopia to educate the masses, to explain not to create contradiction among the people. The contradiction among the people is democratic. We can, by discussion, we can solve it. We have to show them they are one people, united, their interest is the same, they have to work together, and so on and so on. And I really appeal to the Prime Minister Abi to design a new media policy which brings and educates the total population of Ethiopia, and above that also the Horn of Africa. This is my wish, and uh, this element of parasites, we can eliminate them. You have this sort of parasite element, some of them they are writing about Latin America, and so on, supporting the, uh, the, the uh, reactionary forces there, and so, and so on. They call themselves lobbyists. Of course, these are, you have university diplomats in their pocket, but they are charlatans, parasites, never worked a proper job, and they use uh, uh, conflicts as a means of survival. And this we have to educate our people. This is my message to the people of Ethiopia. Very good. Um, so, uh, in this new year, as Ethiopia moves forward uh, to consolidate uh, the gains uh, of uh, the past two years. Uh, what are the main uh, the main challenges, in your opinion, facing this transition? Uh, we have talked about in our last uh, discussion that uh, there was time lost, uh, momentum was lost, uh, the initial momentum of. Uh, great positivity, uh, support of the people, the upbeat uh, mood of the people was great. But uh, uh, in recent times, that momentum seems to have been lost. Now, going forward, uh, what are the main areas that will need to be focused on uh, so that uh, the transition will be uh, smooth? 
and also uh, conflicts uh, avoided, uh, unnecessary conflicts. Uh, I'm, I'm particularly worried about uh, sectarian conflicts that, uh, as you have alluded, uh, media elements have been funning uh, some irresponsible politicians also have been uh, using uh, narrow sectarian uh, uh, identities uh, to, to instigate conflicts. So going forward, what needs to be done uh, in the next year? I think uh, in the next year, uh, uh, the Prime Minister, Dr. Abi, he can design a new line. A new line taking the experience of the last two years and specific the last one year and something. We have to analyze what happened. What happened and where the mistake came. I think one year and something uh, after the crisis between him and the Lama team when it broke, huh? it is because for two reasons I see. One, it became monologue situation. There was no dialogue, open dialogue, and they could not discuss their differences openly in democratic way. And this had created suspicion among the population. There was only rumors around. There is nothing came from uh, uh, Lama, and there is nothing ca came openly also from the prime minister, particularly among the Oromo political forces, which is the center of the country. So these rumors over rumors, rumor, a means of killing and creating destabilization. Rumor is a feudal thinking. Rumor has nothing to do with the modern, modern political thinking. Therefore, to stop rumor, one has to be very frank and honest and come with the discussion. You have to win me by ideas. And open I, debate and dialogue, as you have called. Dialogue. So he has to open a debate and dialogue an honest debate and dialogue in order to have energy for himself and energy from the population and to know also the quality of the population and the intelligence which is existing among the people to serve us to, to uh, uh, act. That is one have, he has to do, Prime Minister Abi. Secondly, I think, as an Oromo and, and, and as a leader of Oromo party, he have also honestly have to start dialoguing with his Oromo brothers. Their contradiction is not an antagonistic contradiction. It's a contradiction, first of all. First, they didn't know each other very well because it is, this is an, uh, the popular uprise brought all of them, including him. The popular uprise, nobody of the Oromo organization can claim that they are the leaders of this uprise. This is a popular, spontaneous uprise of all forces of Oromos who says that we don't want to, to leave as before, and they have seen that the danger which TPLF was planning for them. And finally, that is, everybody was united. Man, woman, all social classes and so on, they say, no, enough is enough. Kappa is Kappa. Mm -hmm. So the, well, nobody can claim. The political parties, instead of using as claiming that, they should say that is, and spontaneous. Now we came, yes, we participated, all of us, in this change. We have to create a dialogue, not in competition against each other, but the dialogue and be maturer and clever political line they should develop. That they will be in speaking turf and instead of going each other and killing each other and so on. That is what the enemy wants from them. This is to create the gap more and more and more. And this is what Weyane or TPLF is interested in. It. Their strategy of chaos is once the Oromos, in one side, create Oromo Amara contradiction, as if it is, which is according to their psychology, according to their analysis, Amharas and Oromos, they cannot work hand to hand. They cannot build a new house because one is a fire and another one is a petrol and so on. This is the, the psychology and the strategy of TPLF. The, and it had proved in the struggle of the people, of both people have united in another, they have overthrown that minority frightened group and run away to Tigray. 
Therefore, that relationship must be built. Those media elements who try to use division, they should be banned in the country. These are not media, they are virus contaminating a di like, like the virus of corona. We have a human corona and we, we, a virus media which is inculcates and wants to kill our mind and bring us into Jonas right. They should be banned. They, can, they should not be allowed and they should be banned and brought to court. But we should build a democratic media which brings everybody and introduce each other to the common cause. That Prime Minister Abiy can do. He has that possi possibility until he comes to the election. If he finishes all this together and brings a mini policy, I think he will succeed and we can marginalize the guns and we can even bring them to court. Their supporters, every time, they will be angry, even when they are listening to these speeches, what I am doing now. They don't want the people of Horn of Africa to have peace. The other element which is very genuine is the policy of the government of Eritrea. It is a very clever policy once is the agreement was signed. The expectation, the expectation of Uyane and the expectation those enemy of us who are very far from us, they expected that if Dr. Abi, because of the circumstances situation, cannot fulfill this removing the Ethiopian troops from Eritrea uh, ground. But Eritrea says that the main important is the bigger piece. It's not that small land. That it is ours, it is known, it has been decided and so and so. The bigger piece is the most important. And the enemies mm -hmm. are against this bigger piece by using the small uh, things and so on and try to create a confusion and which is means that that confusion to incite again Eritrean Ethiopian enmity. I think the policy of Eritrean government was correct. It is much mature and it is much advanced. One, the government of Eritrea wants peace in the region. Secondly, the Eritrean people and the Eritrean government wants a reconciliation among the Oromos and solve their own problem among themselves. Uh, the, people, the government of Eritrea it is, says that it is the right of self-determination of Ethiopian people to organize their own system in whatever uh, uh, logic they have. If they agree with it, we will live with it. We have no problem. Our, we want that external forces to stop and we'll build peace. That is the stand. Of course, a lot of people, the confusion they are creating now, because it's the peace relationship exists between Eritrea and Ethiopia, that it is Eritrean troops are involved in, 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 in Ethiopia and they are suppressing the Oromo people. This is the same, the same hate and the same strategy of the minority Tigrayan regime and their supporters. Because one major thing, they don't want peace in the region, they don't want peace between Eritrea and Ethiopia. They don't want peace between Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Somalia. And they were living for the last 70 years in the crisis of the misery of uh, the people of Horn of Africa. We have to create an awareness, whether it is in outside in diaspora, among the Eritrean people, among the Ethiopian people, among the Somali people, to show the men in, among the Sudanese who is the main enemy and whom they are using to destabilize and weaken us. That must be our task. Any progressive Ethiopian Eritrea, I appeal to them that it is, you have to see the bigger picture. Please concentrate on the bigger picture before you see the smaller picture. Seeing the smaller picture will not give you the possibility of analysis of the bigger picture. We need to see the bigger picture. And on that basis, we can also see the meaning pictures which they are creating in our region, these charlatans who live in a peaceful area and so on, and they want us to be always refugees, our kids to die in the seas, and so on and so on, and we become miserable and we have no future in our continent and in our area. That we have to be, and we have to raise that consciousness. We have to make loud, loud, we have to shout loud. I appeal to the Ethiopian intelligentsia outside. Stop looking to your stop to your mother. Look broader. 
You are rich in the region. You have a very big region. The diversity among us, whether it is religious, language, and so on, it is a richness. It should not be our weakness. That diversity, we can grow with it. We can develop it. We can use it as, as a sign of richness. Those jealous elements who doesn't want us to have peace, we can fight them if we are aware about the world and about our situation. This will be my appeal to everybody. Don't look to the small things. Uh, the stake we have here is very big. We have a very huge resources. We are a rich region with a very poor population. This is a contradiction. Belgium is a poor country with a rich population. These parasites, they live in our expense. And we have to be very aware. I know there are intellectuals and agents who are from us, who are afraid and coward, who doesn't want to say a cat a cat. They run behind them for a small penny. They give them in the name of an NGOs, in the name of this, this agent within us, we have to be exposed. And we have, we can expose them by an open and a clear debate. That's my understanding. Very good. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, covered uh, a lot of ground in this uh, discussion. Uh, I would also give you a few minutes on the economic challenge uh, and the, the uh, in the coming phase of the, of the transition in in the region and how uh, economic cooperation can be enhanced uh, once peace and stability is uh, is guaranteed. For example, uh, on the question of land in Ethiopia, which has been uh, controversial in the past uh, few weeks in the capital, Addis Ababa. But land has been uh, a very, very uh, crucial issue. You have touched upon land grab issue earlier. So uh, talk about the basic economic issues, which are uh, the driving uh, uh, forces uh, behind. Uh, possible conflicts? First of all, uh, uh, nobody discusses until now uh, the legacy of the CPLF bandits policy in land and policy of economics. Until now, nobody is aware what happened to that country. There is no discussion for the last 27 years and the last two years. What happened? Mm. What was the policy of the CPLF? How did they, they, they rule that? How they looted it? What does it mean land grabbing? What does it mean land grabbing in around Addis Ababa? And what is land grabbing outside Addis Ababa? What does it mean? How they did it? What does it mean the land grabbing in Gambella? This is never openly discussed because there are elements in the country who are not interested in peace, who are interested on their, in their own personal and class interest to continue and rule that country through confusion and division and so on and so on. These elements are the parasite elements. They are not interested also on the future of Ethiopian people. We have to identify them. There was no also an open debate. They didn't allow for an open debate. An open debate in the sense that the masses can be involved, the youth can be involved the marginalization of the youth, whether it is in Amhara region or in Oromo region and all in all Ethiopia region. The youth had been marginalized. The youth which had been born or have been 10 years old when TPLF took over the power, they are almost now 40 years old, unemployed, have no future, and so on and so on. They knew, the external forces know that all these problems, they can be used in creating conflict. It is true, you can use this miserable situation and incite against them, let the poor kill each other. But if there is a progressive way of thinking in the country, with the media, with the debate in the universities, I give an example. One of the examples that it is, Professor John Markak's book was totally marginalized in Ethiopia. Nobody speaks about it. Nobody had invited him, he came only one time. Normally, such an expert 
His heart is inside Ethiopia. He will, he wants that the Ethiopian people to solve their own problem. He himself, uh, even though he is a Greek by origin, but is most of his life lived in Ethiopia and, and worked in Ethiopia. This he has been closely involved, I suppose, in the 1960s, 70s with the indeed. progressive student movement. Indeed, indeed. Never brought on the television and asked an interview, allowed to make a debate in the, invest, in the universities, and so on and so on. This could have brought the level of the debate in higher. But what they did, that quietly they killed his book. Quietly, he's closer to the masses. He was spoken last time when he was in Addis, he spoke about also of the peasant issue. You have to do something about the land grabbing, the peasant issue, and so on and so on. So I am appealing to, to Prime Minister Abi. If he doesn't do that, history will judge him. History has its own code. He, history brought him, and history can remove him. But he, if he wants to build a legacy and change the situation in, in Ethiopia and then uh, in the Horn of Africa, we have to develop now a new, as I have said, an open, democratic, progressive dialogue and discussion. Second, best friends of us, we have to differentiate, who are our enemies, who always uh, uh, capitalize with our wound, and who are who wish us good. And those who wish us good, we can bring them home, we can debate with them, and this should be the, the debate. The third debate, I think, gradually there must be a debate among Eritrean and Ethiopian intellectuals, among Eritrean, Ethiopian, and Somali intellectuals. What is their view of the world of Africa? What kind of? In order to make things clear, who is progressive and who is reactionary, who is working for the enemy and who is not working? Not every Eritrean, not every Somali, not every Ethiopian is working for the interest of its people. We have a lot of agents in our society, and these agents have to be identified because they speak our language, they are part of us, but they hide behind us, at the same time promoting the interest of external forces. They should be exposed. That is my thing. Uh, and the fourth, uh, we can, uh, uh, next week, we can continue the internal situation. What happened the last two years? in that country and why we are now here to explore to the majority of the population of Ethiopia, whether it is in diaspora and inside. And uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Elias, that it is. We have to develop hope and we have to continue the struggle. Still, I see the hope bigger that it is, we will face some difficulties, but it is normal in life. We, have, we can make one step forward and two step backward. But the more we struggle, the more we become aware of it, we will succeed. I salute the people of Horn of Africa, and I salute all Ethiopian people that they have to be united and see things very clear. And thank you very much. Indeed, uh, Aluta continua. The struggle continues. It is a long, long struggle. And uh, so we must also continue the discourse, the discussion, the dialogue as we do here uh, on the Horn of Africa TV. We really appreciate your uh, insight, your uh, frank, candid, open uh, discussion of issues. And in the next uh, segment next week, inshallah, we will uh, go deeper uh, on internal matters uh, that, have, uh, that have been uh, facing us uh, in all regions. Uh, I would like us also to focus on Sudan, perhaps, uh, uh, because we have not been uh, paying enough attention to it. Let us try to see the Horn of Africa as one organic unit, uh, which is coming together, which is slowly moving towards cooperation, peace, uh, open trade, uh, economic... Uh, investment and cooperation and uh, and once we do that uh, and we recognize that as you said uh, that we don't need that the era of conflicts should be over a new era of peace should be ushered in we should break the vicious cycle of uh, wars and conflicts and chaos 
uh, then the sky is the limit. I agree with you. And so with the spirit of Aluta Continua, I salute all uh, the struggling peoples of the Horn of Africa who are genuinely uh, fighting for peace, brotherhood, and cooperation. And in this uh, new year, uh, the Ethiopian calendar, uh, may uh, we continue to remain engaged and steadfast in, in the struggle. Uh, again, uh, thank you very much, dear viewers, for following our discussion. Please do uh, visit, uh, take a look at the previous discussions, parts one and two. This is the third part. Part four will be next week. I hope you'll, uh, you'll continue to follow us. Do subscribe and share widely. Uh, until next time. Ila liga, riva darshi, ma'as salama, salam kohullah chinihun, salam nukhullah tnayuhun.